Hello and welcome to a UX Paint tutorial. This video will cover how to create conditional interactions for your prototypes. Conditional interactions are a system of rules to determine whether a given interaction should be performed or not. In this example, if both the full name and email are entered, then on the click of the button, it should take me to the next page. Now, if either or both fields are empty or doesn't meet the specific requirements, an error notification will appear. In this instance, the email address is incomplete. Now let's enter the appropriate email address. Perfect. This time, everything went smooth because all the conditions I set before were met when I clicked the button. So it took us to the next page. Now let's go over how to create a conditional interaction. I've already added my error states to the full name and email fields. Now I'll focus on my button that also has two states, the default and click states. Here, I'm adding my first interaction that will switch us to the next page of the prototype. My trigger will be on click. I'll add the first condition, which will verify if the content of the name input is not empty. The second condition I'm including will confirm whether the user entered a valid email address or not. The most reliable way to validate such details is by using a regular expression holding a proper format as your condition. To learn more about expressions, please visit our tutorial for that. For this interaction, I'm using the option of matches regex to compare the input with the email regex. As you can see, we already included some of the most common regular expressions here, so I'll only need to select the email option. Now make sure that all conditions is selected in the interaction properties. This will ensure that the action will be triggered only if both rules are met at the same time. I will add the other interactions, settings, and save it. To enable the button's click state, I'm using the same conditions as for the go to and page interaction. I'm leaving click as a trigger and I'm adding two rules. The first is to check if the full name input is not empty. And second is to confirm that the data provided in the email matches the email regex. I'm picking other action settings and adding it to the that's me button. The next step I'm taking here is adding a set state interaction that will enable the error state of the full name field if it was left empty. Here, click will also be my trigger, so I'm opening the conditions window where I'm selecting the full name input. I'm selecting is empty condition. I'm including the other interaction properties, is destination element, selecting the state, and saving it. Now you don't need to add new rules to determine the behavior of the full name field when the primary is empty condition is not met. For that, I'm creating a new set state interaction that will enable the default full name group state and choosing the else option after hovering over the added interaction. This will create an if else logic based operation in which if one of the interaction conditions is false, the other will automatically be executed after the trigger is used. If you would like to learn more about if else rules, visit our interactions tutorial. I'm repeating those steps to change the email field state as well. Use the condition of does not match regex, select the email format, and leave click as your trigger. I'm adding the second interaction for the email field as well. Don't forget about the else option you can add to the interactions. It will noticeably reduce the time needed for creating all your rules. Once all the conditional interactions are created, add set state actions to both inputs to enable their default states. Use focus as a trigger to be sure that the action is performed only after activating each field as a result of clicking on it.
Now let's see the prototype in action again. After I clicked on the button, two set state interactions are triggered if the full name and email fields are not filled properly. When I focus on the input fields, the states are switched to the default versions, like here. I'm trying to use the button to go to the next page, and in this case, the go to page interaction is not triggered because the condition with the email regex was added earlier. Only after I provided a valid email address, I will be able to switch to the second page of the prototype and see the button's clicked state. Now let's summarize. Where should you use conditional interactions? Use them whenever you need to determine if a given interaction should be performed or not. They are especially helpful for building web forms, validating input elements in the preview mode, and changing element states if certain conditions are met. Conditional interactions allow creating the flows of interactions to resemble the real applications closely. In UXPIN, the conditions are added to specific interactions, and each interaction can have multiple conditions. And that's it! Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next tutorial.